A new study points to common threads between some of those with the most severe cases of COVID-19. Valley News Team's Lee Zurich looks at that study and also how police and prosecutors are changing policies right now. A new report by the CDC confirms people with underlying health conditions are at a higher risk for severe disease from COVID-19 than people without these conditions. The report tracked patients admitted to hospitals from February 12th to March 28th. 32 percent of people across the country in ICU beds suffer from diabetes, 29 percent cardiovascular disease, 21 percent chronic lung disease. The CDC says these results are consistent with similar findings from China and Italy. Our COVID-19 tracker map shows the virus continues to spread across the United States. And as it does, many law enforcement officials are reevaluating who they arrest and what calls to respond to. You're cutting down on the amount of people you arrest now? We're trying to limit the contact that we have with people, um, particularly uh, in the realm of custodial arrest. So if we have minor crimes where we can actually issue a ticket and make a mandatory court appearance for that person, that limits the amount of time that the officers and eventually the jailers would be in contact with them. Sioux Falls, South Dakota is not the only city making changes. Chicago, Baltimore, and Atlanta are among the many cities also encouraging officers to use discretion. Instead of arresting offenders of low-level crimes like shoplifting, many police officers are writing citations to keep people out of jails. But that doesn't mean that we're not enforcing the law. I want to make sure we're clear on that. We're still at the point where if people are breaking the law here in Fort Worth, you will be arrested. Do we want to arrest you? No. That's your choice, though, not ours. In New Orleans, the jail population has dropped 17 percent since the coronavirus outbreak. And in Brooklyn, the country's fourth largest DA's office has dropped charges on more than 150 cases. I think for a lot of us who care about what's happening in our court systems and in our correctional facilities and really on what's happening on the streets. We realize that today um, we're in a different place than we were a few weeks ago. When an arrest is made today, the risk of transmission of COVID-19 is very, you know, becomes increasingly important, um, especially when we have these low level arrests. The police and prosecutors our team spoke with said that they've seen an overall decrease in crime and calls to dispatch. An innovative owner of a Minnesota vacuum center is making face masks from vacuum cleaner bags. Trevor Hansen of AB Vacuum Center recruited more than 40 volunteers to help make the masks from their homes. In 36 hours, they made 2,200 masks and have even more bags on the way to craft 2,200 more. Nursing homes have already started calling, concerned that they may run out of medical masks. First nursing home that called me, she told me, she said, um, if we don't, we're going to either have a choice of wearing your masks or no masks. Though N95 masks are preferred, a University of Minnesota professor says there could be uses for alternatives in extreme times. Hansen will be sending one of his masks to the university for testing. 